Dear friends, dear colleagues, I'm very happy to present this course about how to read MS-39 corneal anterior segment OCT topography. I'm Dr. Yasser Rifai from Morocco. I have no financial disclosures. What is MS-39? MS-39 is an, an anterior segment high resolution spectral domain OCT coupled with placido discs. The corneal topography studied the anterior surface by placido 22 rings. Elevations are studied by OCT, not Champlug, like Sirius, Sirius or Pentacam or others. It gives better resolution, more accuracy, faster captures, less misalignment, no sensible to opacities, to scars and to haze. Indications are refractive surgery, ectasia suspicion, keratoconus follow-up, corneal diseases and scars, contact lens fitting, biometry, cataract evaluation, glaucoma, and dry eye, and other there are uh, uh, others uh, other indications. What are options? There are a lot of options in this device that we will uh, see in this presentation. How can we take the captures? Is it easy? So the patient must sit comfortably. He, he should fix the red light, open the eyelids. The capture is very fast. It's faster than chain fluke. The patient should stop clear, la clear lens wearing four uh, days after uh, before the capture. Quality specifications, we can accept the examination if the quality is good, uh, if the uh, coverage of sections and keratoscopy is good and uh, well centrated examination, but we cannot accept it if there is a problem in fixation or in coverage of the sections of the keratoscopy. So in this, uh, in this case, in the right uh, image, we cannot accept this uh, image and we should recapture. So the keratoscopy is done by a placido disc of 22 rings. We start by analyzing the four standard maps that contain the uh, 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 corneal thickness, uh, anterior elevation, posterior elevation and tangential map and some uh, numeric in, for in data in the right side so we'll start with this numeric data so after the quality uh, specification we will see some uh, indices summary indices in the summary indices we will analyze the HVID which is the horizontal visible iris diameter uh, what we call uh, the white to white we'll see the pupil the position of the center of the pupil uh, according to the uh, to the corneal center its its direction we will see the thinnest location of the cornea its thickness and location we will see the apex of the the, the cornea of the cone its its location and its curvature the the curvature of the apex is what we call k max and in in uh, in ma39 we call it AKF, which is apex keratoscopy uh, uh, front. We will also study the anterior chamber because it's uh, it's an OCT of the uh, anterior uh, uh, anterior segment. So we will measure the anterior uh, the depth of the anterior chamber, which is AD, and here it is 3.04. We will study also the sulcus to sulcus and other parameters like the corneal uh, volume. We'll examine it also other parameters, the the key readings, and the key readings will be studied in meridians and emi meridians in the both uh, uh, faces and anterior and posterior face. So uh, we will uh, study meridians K one. K2, 
decay-joule, the average, it's decay m, average, and the cylinder with the angles in 3 mm, 5 mm, and 7 mm. We, ca we, we can study with meridians in the anterior surface and in the posterior surface, and we can study with emi meridians in the anterior surface and in the posterior surface. The emi meridian will uh, um, help us to uh, study the skewed radial axis because here we can measure the angle of the skewed radial axis in, in, uh, in all the, the diameters we need. We will also examine the and find the epithelial indices, which means the 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 thinnest location of the epithelium, the 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 locate the, the thinnest location in the three millimeters, average and maximum in three millimeters, and uh, in the circle between three three millimeter and six millimeter, we we will also study the uh, minimal, maximal and average epithelium. We can study the shape and this is of the keratoconus of uh, for every chosen diameter. So we will we will find the uh, the flat ray and the steep ray, which is K1 and K2, and we can examine uh, we can uh, measure it with uh, with millimeters or in, in millimeters or in diopters. We will measure also the root mean square, which is uh, uh, wavefront aberrations, and the asperity, the Q value of each uh, surface, anterior or posterior surface, in six millimeters or eight millimeters or other diopters, or uh, other diameters. We need to know some uh, terminology. So, in the keratoconus summary map, we have this information that we we, we should know which has uh, keratometric information and elevation information. Keratometric information of the front, this is the K-max apex keratoscopy front, and the posterior K-max apex keratoscopy back. And we will also uh, uh, find the information about elevation, so we will, we will find the anterior elevation, and the posterior elevation. Anterior elevation is keratoconus vertex front, and the posterior elevation is keratoconus vertex back. So the the terminology in uh, uh, MS39 is different from the other devices, but the, the principle is, is the same. Is the K-max of the anterior surface, K-max for the posterior surface. This is the anterior elevation, and this is the posterior elevation. We have also other parameters in the same map that we will study after. We, we will have some uh, information about, uh, about asymmetry of curvature and information about aberrations. So the information about asymmetry, we have the symmetry index front, SIF, and the symmetry index back which is based on the tangential maps and it will measure the asymmetry in, in each surface and it will give indices which can be normal, uh, moderate or abnormal. And it studies also uh, some indices uh, about wavefront but only about coma, trefoil and spherical aberration. So the BCV, BCV is a parameter which include only comma, trefoil, and spherical aberrations, and we can calculate it for the front surface, back surface, and the total. We start analyze of maps. So this display of four maps is standard, and we will find the tangents, anterior tangential map, the thickness map, the elevation, uh, anterior elevation and posterior elevation maps. You can change only the colors and the scale. But you, ha you have other displays, this six map displays, which is very interesting. And you can customize 
which uh, uh, map you want you can you can put here thickness of epithelium or thickness of stroma or uh, 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 anterior chamber depth or elevation or anterior elevation so you, you can m manage and you can choose each map in each uh, each place here and the most important maps we will study are the anterior sagittal map or the axial map which use this principle so in the axial map we have one axis of the surface of of the cornea and all the the rays are coming from this axis to the cornea and this this will allows us to measure the uh, keratometry of this point so the, the keratometry of, the, of this point is coming from this ray and the uh, the end the refractive index of of the cornea which is 1.3375 this is what we call axial map, axial keratometry. So it will study like all uh, uh, topo uh, topographies. It will study the symmetry, the asymmetry. It will be a, uh, the shape will be normal when uh, there is a symmetric bowtie in as in cases of astigmatism or round or oval when there is no astigmatism and we can see the asymmetry we can see the skew radial axis the uh, uh, skewed uh, uh, shape but that will be confirmed with the amy meridians this is a case of keratoconus with the parameters we know the asymmetry and the strax and uh, we can see here all the shapes we can find in any topography it's like other topographies, round, oval, with the superior steep, and inferior steep. We can have the symmetric bowtie with the sracks, with uh, asymmetric bowtie, with uh, uh, with the snowman, uh, asymmetric bowtie, and and sracks. We can have some special shapes: butterfly, crab claw, vertical leg, and some irregular cases. So, this all these these shapes are abnormal these two shapes are normal if the keratometry is normal and these shapes are abnormal these all are abnormal so uh, this this is the same like in a in any uh, uh, topography in any specular topography we have the 3d uh, uh, representation of all the maps we have so this is a, a representation of the action map that will show us the we have uh, uh, the reality of the of the cornea uh, we can see it in, in 3d we can uh, it, it will be more um, we can we can see it better than in uh, 2d and it give us an idea about the shape of the cornea this is a tangential map so the principle is different from the from the axial map so in the axial map we have an axis in the tangential map or uh, instantly map it means that in, for, for every point of the cornea there is uh, an, a small axis with a ray and the the keratometry is measured in every point with uh, 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 with a proper axis so uh, this tangential, tangential map is different from the other so this is a case of keratoconus with tangential map and it shows a better location of the cone means we can see the the, the we can we can localize the, the 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 cone posterior action action map so we uh, with this device we can measure the uh, the keratometry the readings of the posterior surface which is very very important because uh, uh, the the we can see the the steepening of the uh, posterior surface like in this case in keratoconus so the the same principle of uh, the anti anterior uh, surface it's the same for the posterior surface and the keratometries are uh, in negatives so here it is a, a normal case with symmetric bowtie and here it is an abnormal case with asymmetry 
and we can also measure the, the, the posterior surface with the tangential map in the posterior uh, uh, in the back surface and we'll have here uh, a symmetric bow tie and here, here a keratoconus shape with a stiffening. Elevations map. The, the MS-39 is, uh, is in OCT, so it will measure the thickness of the cornea and the elevations of the cornea. The principle is the same with the other uh, devices. So th for every surface, the device will create uh, a reference surface, which is here uh, a BFS, a best fit sphere, and uh, with the with a Q value of, of zero, uh, so it's a perfect sphere that fit, that fits the, uh, the the surface of the cornea, and all what is uh, uh, over the surface is positive, and all what is under the surface is negative. This is uh, uh, an example for uh, a surf a reference surface. Uh, of 46.55 uh, uh, diopters with a Q value of zero. It means a perfect sphere. So anterior elevation. Anterior e elevations is examined in this case uh, the anterior elevation of the anterior surface of the cornea. It means with the epithelium. And which, when it is normal, it is a symmetric bow tie. And the, the, the number of the elevation of the thinnest location is very low, so it is normal. And we have the stromal elevation, it means without epithelium. This is a very interesting point in, in, uh, in the MS-39. It means that this device will exclude the epithelium and make a, ref uh, a, a reference surface only for the anterior stroma and will uh, uh, will 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 give us the elevation of only the anterior stroma as the most of uh, uh, illnesses or uh, of the cornea are from from the stroma and the ectasia is, uh, is a stromal uh, disease the the examination and the, the exam of the elevation of the stroma is better than the, the examination of the, the anterior uh, uh, elevation with epithelium because the, in this case there is no masking effect of the epithelium. This is the point, no masking effect of the epithelium. In this case, we have an anterior elevation uh, with the epithelium and from this, for the same eye, we have an anterior elevation of only the stroma without the epithelium. So what is the difference here? For the same eye, you have more elevation in, 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 in this area because uh, there, is no, there is no masking effect of the epithelium. This is really, really very important. The masking uh, effect of the epithelium sometimes will hide some elevations and some, uh, can can hide some uh, degrees of ectasia. Uh, so uh, uh, between these two maps, I will prefer to analyze this one. Posterior elevation. Posterior elevation is very important when it is normal. It is a symmetric bow tie, or it is a, a, a small island, but with very low. Uh, uh, very low elevation and here this is a keratoconus with uh, posterior bulging we see here so this it's an obvious obvious uh, diagnosis and it is a criteria of diagnosis of keratoconus the pachymetry map the pachymetry map is important in the evaluation in refractive surgery it is not a criteria or a criteria criterion in diagnosis of keratoconus, but uh, an, 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 a thickness map will give us an idea about the cornea, and uh, it is normal when when it is centered, when the thinnest location is in the center, when there is a, a symmetry. But here, 
we have uh, uh, a thin uh, corneal and we have um, displacement of the thinnest location and uh, an asymmetry here so here this is not a criteria of keratoconus but we know that this case is keratoconus but this is not a criteria it is only uh, it gives an idea when uh, seeking for uh, uh, cases for refractive surgery but we will compare with another interesting map which is the stromal pachymetry map here we have the total pachymetry map and here the stromal pachymetry map it means without epithelium and in this in, in this map we will measure only the thickness of stroma and this is very very interesting it's very interesting in diagnosis so we will see in this case this is the same case the same case we will, we will have a, a small displacement of the thinnest location but in without the epithelium we have a real displacement we have the real asymmetry and because of the absence of the masking effect of the epithelium the epithelium is masking the epithelium is misleading so every time we can measure anything without the epithelium it will better and more accurate for the diagnosis so here we have keratoconus here, here we have the uh, normal case and uh, this stromal pachymetry map will hel uh, help us in the refractive surgery it will help us in 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 uh, keratoconus management by cross-linking because we will know the th the thinnest location of the stroma and we will adapt the protocol of the cross-linking uh, uh, it will be adapted to the to this pachymetry epithelial mapping epithelial mapping is a very very interesting role is very rev revolution it's a huge development development in corneal imaging we know that epithelium is not homogeneous like what we we, we knew we knew before epithelium is not homogeneous epithelium is not a neutral uh, 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 layer epithelium is a, a layer which uh, that changes with the uh, with the chains below it means when we have an irregular stroma we will have automatically an irregular epithelium this irregular epithelium that will try to hide the irregularity of the stroma it will fill the gaps and smoothen the surface of the cornea it will hide some of the surface abrasion of the stroma when there is keratoconus in the stroma the, there are uh, uh, huge aberrations and the, the epithelium will try to move will try to change its thickness in every places to hide these aberrations and to reduce their, these aberrations it will thin in the peak of the cone and it will thicken around the peak and it will give us the the donut image so Dan Reinstein uh, uh, proved that the, this theory of early keratocon and uh, keratoconus, and he, he shows in this draws the 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 behavior of the epithelium. It is very interesting to see the behavior of the epithelium, because if we understand the behavior of the epithelium, we will see what is behind what we uh, uh, it and uh, interest us. It it is the stroma so here when we have a regular epithelium it means that, that we have a regular uh, stroma when we have an irregular epithelium it means that we have some ectasia below and here you see that there is a bulging in posterior surface and a thinning in the in the peak in this case the in this case the topography will be abnormal because the the bulging is is very important but in this case the bulging is very small and the epithelium tries to smoothen the cornea and in this case the epithelium hides the, the stromal cone from the front surface so we will have here a normal topography but an abnormal epithelial map that's why uh, actually we cannot work 
topography, the fracture surgery without an epithelial mapping because we will have some uh, false negatives here the, it is a false negative topography and it will lead us to maybe uh, uh, in, in post refractive surgery ectasia this is very important in the refractive surgery and sometimes we, we will have some uh, uh, some some steepening in topography but it's uh, only a thickening of the epithelium it's, it's a epithelial hip hyperplasia and we will find in the in epithelium uh, 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 thickening in the steepest area that will exclude the the keratoconus so this the, this this uh, this draw is very very interesting that shows that normal epithelium regular epithelium it means a regular stroma when we have irregular epithelium it means that there is something in the stroma when it is a, there is a thinning over the peak it means that there is a keratoconus when there is a thinning over the peak it means that there is not a keratoconus this this uh, uh, OCT scan will help us to understand in reality what what happens we see here that this keratoconus this advanced keratoconus we see you see this shape of the posterior surface but the anterior surface is more is is, uh, is more smooth and because of the filling effect of epithelium we have here an epithelial thickening and an epithelial uh, uh, thinning that will hide this irregularity and uh, if we if we do the the, the anterior surface uh, topography we will see a, a smooth uh, uh, maybe a, a smooth uh, uh, area of topography or uh, uh, but if you, you, you if we measure the elevation of the anterior surface it will be less uh, uh, less bulged than the elevation of the anterior stroma that's why the epithelium is misleading this is a case when you can see the 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 filling effect of the epithelium this is a huge huge filling effect and it will give uh, a regular topography but the real topography of the stroma is uh, is uh, all different and uh, because of this filling effect we will have a false topography so the topography here does not reflect the reality of the stroma and we need this OCT uh, uh, scan to to see this and uh, it uh, um, it explain also the behavior of the epithelium so the normal semiology of the epithelium is uh, that it is uh, regular uh, we have a small asymmetry we have a temporal superior thinning because of the eyelid and the difference between the superior and the inferior side of the epithelium is about 5 microns it is sensitive to clear uh, uh, to contact lens wearing to dry eye to surface diseases so abnormal epithelium is the typical donut image you can see it in two dimensions and in three dimensions here and we see this is the the thinning in this area so this is the thin over the over the peak of the cone over the the the, the apex and there is a, a thickening uh, around it we see other pictures here we have a thinning over the cone and a thickening around it and here we will see the thickening and the thinning when you see it in in uh, three dimensions you can uh, uh, you can understand more and feel it more than two dimensions this is another case with a thinning and the thickening see here the thinning and the thickening so you see that the epithelium in keratoconus is very very irregular and this have this have uh, very important implications in the treatment so when we do uh, uh, when we do a, a surface treatment in uh, keratoconus 
and we uh, we do the the wave front uh, from the surface and then we ablate the epithelium and then we treat the stroma with the the abrasions on the wave front of the surface so it gives us sometimes bad results because of the the, the this this irregular irregularity of the epithelium epithelium is not regular epithelium is not a neutral layer epithelium is a layer with a refraction with abrasions that's why we have to take it in consideration in the treatment in keratoco in the treatment of keratoconus so this uh, this epithelial mapping this this is in this case is like this case here it's like this case so we have a steepening of the the the, the steepening of the topography but we have a thickening in the steepest area so if we see here we have a thickening here that show us that this is it is not a keratoconus so the thickening in the inferior side and we don't have donuts uh, so it it allowed us allow us to to avoid false positives when we have a first stripping stripping and we can uh, do some uh, keratorefractive procedures in some cases but we have to be aware that uh, uh, we can have some some false uh, negative of epithelium uh, in cases of association with basal membrane dystrophy so we have to correlate this uh, data to axial map and to elevations so we have to pay atten attention to the the dystrophies and uh, we have to examine it with slit lamp with dilated pupil slit uh, with slit lamp and uh, with OCT sections looking forward some opacities in the anterior surface of the stroma keratoconus uh, summary is uh, is an interesting tool this is the the uh, in, in, uh, artificial intelligence of the device that will help us to uh, uh, to have some information if the, if there is a keratoconus suspect keratoconus or not but uh, uh, we will be uh, uh, the, the decision uh, comes to the, the, the physician so in this case we will see uh, uh, this is a normal uh, in the normal case there is no keratoconus here because of the end all the indices we have seen before the asymmetry uh, uh, indices the the wave front indices are uh, normal range and uh, uh, all these maps are normal so it is uh, uh, compatible with a normal case in this case we have some abnormalities in the uh, there are some asym asymmetries the abnormalities in the wavefront uh, there are some uh, uh, some uh, uh, abnormalities in in the map so it is a, a keratoconus suspect In this case, we have all abnormal information, asymmetry, uh, the, the wave front information are, are abnormal, and we have all maps are abnormal, and all the abnormalities are in the same area. It's the same area, and this is, is compatible with a keratoconus. And here we have abnormalities, it is asymmetric, there are uh, uh, ab abrasions, high abrasions, their asymmetry, abnormalities, but these abnormalities are not in the same area. And in these cases, it's not keratoconus; it's other thing. Maybe this case was treated, treated by by uh, by uh, uh, by LASIK, by asymmet by uh, decentered LASIK, or uh, there is a scar, or there is corneal graft, or other uh, 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 other pathologies. So it gives us this information abnormal or treated but the manufacturer say that this indices or this artificial intelligence uh, uh, it, uh, it it will help us it's a tool to to help us it is an indicator of diagnosis but 
the the, the doctor uh, should uh, not follow only these indices but do uh, the examination of all maps and the clinical uh, context of the patient to 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 have the diagnosis of normal of uh, pathology cornea the corneal wavefront is also a very interesting tool because uh, it will uh, give us the 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 wavefront of the cornea it will help us in uh, in refractive surgery in uh, keratoconus screening in uh, the treatment of the keratoconus with the ablation uh, treatment so it is very useful uh, and for evaluation of the quality of the vision with with, with this uh, uh, with this uh, display so it is a tool which is very very important and we can uh, evaluate the the the, the wavefront in uh, in uh, three millimeters in five millimeters in uh, seven millimeters so we can have a, a, a real uh, evaluation of all the low order we have the low order here is astigmatism because it's only a corneal wavefront and the the high order aberrations of the anterior surface and the posterior surface and calculate the root mean square so in summary, the keratoconus diagnosis will uh, 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 is based on uh, some uh, uh, information. The first information is the uh, axial map, with uh, that will show some uh, typical shapes, abnormal shapes, asymmetry, strax, uh, 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 butterfly uh, so it will uh, uh, have some special shapes uh, or asymmetric bow tie uh, with snowman or other things like this plus plus an uh, posterior elevation anterior elevation abnormal anterior elevation or uh, posterior elevation which is abnormal and uh, with this device as we have the epithelial mapping we uh, use this uh, this epithelial uh, uh, shape and uh, when we have a donut we have a thinning over the peak it means that it is an, an indicator of keratoconus and we can he be helped by the keratoconus summary In keratorefractive procedures, this device will be very, very helpful. We should analyze all these parameters, anterior surface, posterior surface, pachymetry, epithelial mapping, the pachymetry of the stroma, the pachymetry of the whole cornea. We will add to this we, uh, the enantiomorphism. We have to examine uh, the both eyes and to compare them the corneal wavefront and to add to the, all this to the clinical data of the patient and when we have major risk it means asymmetry abnormal elevation donut a very thin cornea keratoconus compatible it is a contraindication of any keratorefractive procedure so we'll uh, go for uh, fakic IOL or uh, for nothing when we have minor risk small asymmetry axial map but uh, normal mapping or a limit uh, lo uh, limit uh, 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 thickness of the cornea but all the parameters are okay we can go for surface ablation but when there is no risk we can go for uh, uh, lasik or smile or PRK. it depends on but it depends on the clinical data other usage of the the ms39 it's an OCT. It's uh, anterior, a very, very uh, uh, high re resolution OCT. Cataract biometry, glaucoma, intracornea ring segment. So we have this uh, OCT scan, high resolution, resolution OCT scan. Where we have here the <coughs> uh, the the ring, and we have here the tunnel of the the ring. And we can measure all this. We, we have some scales. We can we can measure uh, the angle, the iris, the 
the the anterior depth so all the, these elements this is uh, this is uh, an OCT that help us to do a contact lens fitting a scleral lens fitting this is a case of a corneal uh, scar this is a case of uh, a contact lens scleral contact lens fitting in an eye with a corneal graft you can see this high re resolution of the, the 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 OCT and we can measure the the clearance of the lens and the, this help us to do a very very good contact lens fitting it uh, this device can be used in the glaucoma so we have the display of glaucoma screening so we can measure the back pachymetry the anterior chamber depth and we have the IUP correction we can also measure the uh, uh, angle and uh, anterior, the, the anterior chamber uh, depth it will help us also for intracorneal segment planning it will give us two important information it will give us the axis of the coma and the axis of the, the the cylinder and it will it will give us the thickness of the the area where uh, where we will, we will do the tunnel to avoid the perforations so the the planifications is done by the the doctor uh, we will choose the number of rings we will choose the, the optical zone we will choose the thickness of the ring but it will help us to measure the thickness in every place the thickness in incision the thickness in all the tunnel the minimal thickness and when we have a good thickness in all the tunnel we uh, we, we can uh, feel very uh, comfortable in doing our tunnel without the risk of of perforation it is helpful also in keratoconus progression follow-up we can uh, monitor the progression of the keratoconus with this device in different dates with all the parameters the the aberration parameters with the thickness with the, uh, the k-max or the akf with uh, root mean square with the, all these parameters that will uh, uh, give us the the possibility to monitor this uh, the progression of this disease it is uh, uh, helpful for i will calculations we will we should provide the uh, uh, the uh, axial length and then the device will give us the uh, the power of the lens it is helpful in the dry eye and it will measure the non-invasive breakup time it is very helpful also in refractive surgery to avoid uh, cases of uh, dry eye and thank you very much for your uh, attention uh, if there is any questions uh, please email me on this email or uh, send me a whatsapp or uh, send me a message in Facebook, Instagram uh, and uh, please uh, you, you can follow me in, in YouTube I hope that this course uh, war was interesting the, the, there will be other courses uh, uh, more deep uh, and uh, we will discuss every, uh, every map and uh, it will give more time but this is only uh, an, uh, a summary to help us to start uh, working with this uh, new device thank you very much